All right, welcome to Fresh Set of Downs. Daryl Daniel, it's week four. Incredible. I mean, where's the season going? Yeah. I mean, already. It started like well, it's going fast. <laughs> wow. And we are just so very lucky yeah. to have Jeff Lang, head coach of Governor Mifflin, uh, with us tonight. Coach, thanks very much for your time. We know everything is really busy this time of year, but uh well, you had a couple of nice wins. Obviously, you had a gap in there. But the right. two impressive victories, uh, you know, so far, what do you think of the team this year? A uh, very mature team. They're just, you know, athletically, physically, it's, and, you know, even mentally is one of the more mature teams we've had in many years here. And, uh, and the senior leaders that are with us are just, you know, holding everybody accountable to – uh, do what's right and take us to the level we want to get to. And physically, yeah, and I, I think that's big. You know, we we've been we've been fortunate. You know, the work uh, over the last couple of years. Um, you know, like we talked about, but I think the biggest thing is those guys understand what's in front of them. And obviously, you know, I know you guys only go week to week. Us as uh, analysts and stuff, we can look down the road, but every single week, these guys have to come in ready to play because. Again, with everything going on, you know, you might miss a week or something, and that's a week of conditioning or training. So if guys aren't prepared and not doing anything, doing things they're supposed to be doing, you know, they can have a slip-up. But, again, with the leadership and those guys, they've been in your program. They understand what your expectations are, um, you know, and, and, and I think we're, as we get mm -hmm. a little bit deeper into it, we'll talk about a little bit more today. Yeah, each group of seniors we have, they, they've been together for a long time, and, you know, they've actually been pretty good all the way up through in their junior, you know, even Broncos coming up through, through the junior yeah. high program, the ninth grade program. And, you know, you know, you know Cameron Stewart and Brandon Strouser and, you know, Connor Marinak and, you know, Greg Zuber and Dominic Scheide, Devontae Phillips, the whole group of seniors, they're just, right. they've played together for so long and they've been successful together as a group. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they're, they're very hungry for it this year. Right. And they showed up. Yeah, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your opponent this week. Uh, Exeter is coming in, thankfully. Uh, myself and my buddy Kerry Moyer will be there calling the game this week mm -hmm. again. Uh, you know, this has really turned into a, a really, like, 1A <laughs> kind of rivalry for you guys now. You know, Wilson first and then Exeter. Boy, mm -hmm. it's uh, – tell us a little bit about what you're expecting this week. Uh, I'm expecting the typical Exeter team that we play every year. They are tough. They come out. They're going to smack you in the teeth. They, they're going to go four quarters. And, you know, I, I said to the kids, you know, the last five years, these have been four-quarter games. Now, last year was one of the few years that we kept it in check in the second half. But you go back to, you know, in history, the last four or five years, they have been – they come back, and it's, it's a game right down to the wire. And, you know, they, we better be ready to play four quarters. You know, they got some really good athletes. Uh, the McCuster kid's a, you know, a seasoned quarterback. He throws the ball well, runs the ball well. And, you know, between Yoakum and Strauss, uh, they're just tough kids. They're great at linebacker. And you put them in the backfield, that's just a deadly mix. And they got this Eric Nangle kid now who's, uh, you know, real shifty and getting a lot of yards for him. And you, know, you can't forget the, the Schleifer kid. I'm not sure how you say his name, but, you know, he's 6'6", and he catches everything that comes near him. And they right. give him a lot. So he's pretty good. They got some talent. And, you know, up front, they're good. They're solid. You know, we watch right. them against Hempfield and, you know, the CD East. They're, and they're just moving people off the ball. They have about a six-inch split if they're – if that. And they're just going to say, hey, we're going to create a new line of scrimmage and run right behind it. Right. And and a good thing about this summer, you know, in, in, in my business, I've been able to work with, as you know, a lot of kids from your school and Exeter. Um, you know, obviously, you, you, we talked about Strouser. Cameron, obviously Nick Singleton, Jose, um, the newcomer you have, Ian yep. Johnson, um, Aiden Martin. but a guy that a guy that I think you know going into the season, I think we talked about a little bit last year. Um, yep. Aiden Martin, you know, let's let's talk about him a little bit because you know he, I know he was uh, he played a little bit for you as a freshman mm -hmm. and, and he's as a sophomore. I told him he's going to be a guy if he can if he can put it all together, he could be one of the X factors. I mean, because you got a no, number of guys. But he can be an X factor for your team. But um, in your opinion, what do you think his biggest 
jump has been going into He's this season. Work out a holic, and you know it because I know you train him and work with him. Yes. Yo, he he also yeah. goes between uh Vecchio and Brandon Orndorff, our strength coaches. He's in there every day in the morning working out, and he goes up to broad strength. And those guys do a great job with him up there. So he's sure. just a work alcoholic, and it shows from last year to this year. I mean, when you look at him, he is just a physically different person. Uh, last year, yo, he was athletic and smart, and as a freshman, can get in there and play safety for us and do some really neat things, and you know, keep uh, you know, make plays and tackles and cover people. But this year, he's just stepped it up to a whole new level. And yeah. you know, I think you know, it, it's you know, with. Uh, the fortunate thing is with having like a Nick Singleton on our team where college is looking at him, you know, they're seeing him and they're like, hey, who's that, who's that kid back here? Who's that number 35, you know? Absolutely. And that's back. what I tell a lot of these kids. And they have to understand when you have someone mm -hmm. like a Nick Singleton, uh, you're going you're gonna to have eyes. You have Cameron Stewart. You have Brandon Strouser. So guys like that bring that. So, you know, with last week, Nick had, I mean, Aiden having three touchdowns three different ways. That shows versatility and his ability to play defense, to play offense. And a lot of those things all summer, we spent time working on those specific details of playing over the top, especially in the defenses that you guys play, staying back as a safety, reading the quarterback's eyes. I think you, I think you did a great job of that last week. And I think as you guys continue to move on, especially for this extra game, because it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a very, very physical game. Um, and if they put the ball in the air, if he's able to make plays, especially with that six six wide receiver that we talked about, if he can just get the ball on the ground and get him in fourth down situation, I think that's going to be big. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We said, you know, I've been telling these kids, you know, I think this game is going to come down to, you know, discipline, you know, with uh, ball ball security, who's going to have you know turnover situations. I think it's going to come down to special teams. And, uh, you know, who, who, who can get the best field position situation going in the game and win the turnover battle is what this game's going to end up being. Like, like a lot of games. Like a lot mm -hmm. of games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you got, you know, you got two good teams coming into it, that, that's oftentimes the deciding factor. Exactly. Right. And yeah. then I guess and the, the other big thing that we probably need to talk about is the cooler heads prevail because it's going to be a very, very intense game. And, you know, like I said, I've been around your program and, and I've been around you guys in the locker. We talked about those guys staying calm because, again, you start getting that to back and forth. And Cam's a very exciting guy because he's one of those guys. He's a great talker. I mean, mm -hmm. he backs it up, too. So being able to, and temp, you know, talking to Strouser and then, you know, actually having JR and Ty. I mean, that, that's, that's a whole bunch of intense guys in there. A lot of testosterone that are going to be on that field. So, you know, just being able to keep level heads. And I think that is also an element of the game that's going to be huge because, again, late hits or talking at the game, getting flags, trying to keep emotions in check, that's going to be tough. So I think the team that also does that is going to be – is going to really help out a lot too. Yeah, we've been talking about that all week with our kids, you know. We got to, we got to play government from football. We got to worry about ourselves. Yeah. We got to get better ourselves, and we focus on ourselves. And, you know, we, we can't get involved in that, you know, crap with the yeah. – you know, with another team. I don't care who it is, you know. But, you know – Mix, yeah. You know, Miff and Ector, you know, it's notorious in that kind of game. So, absolutely, yeah, yep. we got to keep ourselves under control. S mm -hmm. Sounds like Daryl wants to get out there and strap him up and play in this one, man. He's, he's <laughs> uh, I'll put him in the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, look, those, them days are gone, man. Like, <laughs> I know my limits. I, I, I'll stay on the sidelines, and I just, I'll give some thumbs up, and I'll do that. That's about it. <laughs> well, listen, Coach, thank you very much for your time tonight. Really appreciate it. Best of luck. I'll see you Friday. And, uh, boy, one of the games that, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to. So, best of luck, yep. and we'll see you later, okay? Yep. Here's Carol. Thank you very much. All right. Take care now. Absolutely. Yeah. Have a good one. Yep. And just exit out, Coach. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you later. Guys. All right. We'll see you. See you later, Coach. All right, Daryl. Uh, yeah, boy, you were <laughs> – when you were talking about that game, boy, you were – I could see you frothing at the mouth there. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, because I love the kids on both teams. I've been fortunate to, to work with Nick Singleton for a couple of years. I've been working with Cam Strouser, Jose at linebacker, you know, Aiden now a couple of years. So, like, I really know those – because the same thing with Strauss. Daryl Strauss, Ty Yoakum. Um, and I was talking about the running back, Nango. Um, I mean, they, it's going to be a very, very good game, but it's just going to come down to um, the strategies of the game. Who's going to be able to execute their game plan better? If somebody gets down 14 nothing, how is that team going to react? I think those things can come into play. Yeah, who's um, going to so let the again, game it's going to come be a good to them? Game. Who's going to let the game yeah, come absolutely. to them? Absolutely.
Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the game. I'll, I'll be on my couch. I'll have my popcorn ready. I'll have it up on my TV and be watching it. Because obviously, normally I would be at the game. But, you know, due to COVID situations, yeah. you know, I totally understand not being able to. But again, you know, there, there's, you know, I'll still be able to see my guys play and, 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 and have a great night. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let's get into the recaps from last week. Um, actually, one of the, I'll be honest with you, one of the surprising results from last week for me is not that Steel High won, but right. that they won so convincingly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because last week we were talking, because like I said, I really like Middletown. I've seen Middletown versus Governor Mifflin, and I really thought, man, they're, they're, they didn't take a step down at all. But Steel High, from the year before, their coach does a great job of getting those guys ready to play. And, I mean, Makai Flowers took over the game, literally. <laughs> he took over the game. So, I mean, they just they had no answer for him at all. Yeah, and and actually a team that's kind of emerging here, and we'll see that, I think, as we get into the uh, the power rankings, is Octorara. They beat your buddies in Columbia 27 to 20. Yeah, Trainer and Stolfus had a great game. Uh, they were leaders of the team. Um, but Columbia, again, they, they're right there. They play tough. So, again, it just is very good to see. But, you know, like I also, like I talked about, I know Octorara – they do have numbers down there. They do have a little bit more talent than, than we think. So uh, that's a nice school district down there also. So, again, with the shortened season, anything can happen. Yeah. You know, again, Octorero, they've been off the radar for a very long time. In, a, in essence, the playoffs have already started. I mean, you know, let's just be real. With, yeah, yeah. With, with, with so few mm -hmm. teams making the playoffs, the playoffs have already started. Um, Warwick really handed it to Mannheim Central, 45 to 14. Yeah, I, I just too many, I, too many mistakes on the Mannheim Central side, which is not how they, they play. Um, but again, Warwick forces you into that. And they just, I mean, they did a great job. Warwick ran the ball. They ran the ball very well, which we, we kind of expected, you know. But I think Mannheim Central made more mistakes than they would like to have made, uh, which is not a little bit out of character. But, you know, they got a lot of first-time starters over there, a lot of new guys. So, um, but Warwick, it, it, I mean, it's kind of the team they have, that Cedar senior-led team. Uh, obviously, Rucci is one of the, the, the cornerstones of that team. So, uh, Schmidt. But, you know, the running back had a big game. And the Kraken like came back last week. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you I know, mean, that's got to be an enormous boost for that team coming down the stretch. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I mean, if he's healthy, he's kind of in the same situation as my guy over at uh, uh, Lamp Peter Strasburg, uh, Sean McTaggart. So he's coming back and he's got to get those legs underneath them. And so, you know, hopefully by the end of the season, you know, maybe four or five more games when they start hitting the playoffs, he's going to be ready to go and they're going to be a tough out. And Burke's Catholic, I mean, as expected, uh, you know, they beat Daniel Boone, they came back. Uh, Boone's got a good team there, but Boy, Burke's Catholic, they look awful tough. Uh, but yeah. they're, they're in an awful tough 4A bracket, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that bracket is going to be tough this year. Um, so, but again, like, you know, we kind of expected to win. I thought it'd be a little bit closer, but Burke's Catholic, again, I, I've been able to watch film on them. They look very good, very good. Uh, your Catholic uh, convincingly over Bermudian. Um, yep you know, which, which we thought. And then Governor Mifflin, we touched on that a little bit, the fact that they – I'll be honest with you. It was the first team that I ever saw that had a punt return touchdown, uh, a kickoff return touchdown, um, interception return touchdown, block punt touchdown, and a touchdown pass and a touchdown rushing. I mean, you know, they had – they wow. did all ways. And it was, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, obviously Aiden Martin, he had three of those touchdowns, as you talked about. But, yeah. um, right. you know, they did it all ways. And, see, I think that that's the formula for a team to go a long way, that they're not – that they can do it in all ways, like Coach Lang talked about, how important it is to be able sure. – the, the special teams portion of the game as well. Absolutely, because, again, if you're one-dimensional – if you have a team that can stop the run and you can't do anything else, that's big enough uh, to move. But you can, like, you punt the ball, somebody can run it back, you kick it off, like you said. So it, if a team is not one-dimensional, they're going to be very, very, very hard to beat. So, again, the game Exeter, um, I think last year Governor Mifflin was up big at the half. 
uh, extra came going back and ended up losing only by a touchdown, I think it was. So they have that on their mind. But again, like that's, that's going to be a very, very, very good game this week. All right. Well, here comes our first attempt now at like sharing my screen to do the district three rankings. So, uh, you know, hopefully everybody, uh, you know, will uh, bear with me here. But we're going to try this. How, can you see that? Yes, sir. We're All winning. right. All right. We are, we are getting good here with this. And uh, so anyway, um, not a lot of teams in any division. Um, sure looks like the Lone Catholic and Steel High are going to be the, the two teams that will make it from A. Uh, look at Camp Hill, you know. I think yeah. that's a nice story emerging, you know, uh, if they can keep it up. Um, and, you know, there's your buddies, Columbia. It looks like there's going to be four teams there shooting for just two spots. Yeah. But, you know, where it really starts to get interesting now is it in, is in 3A. Um, man, look at where Middletown is. They're number 14. Now, yeah. now, granted, there's, you know, there's a lot of games to be played, but that's an awful lot of teams that you got to leapfrog over. Right, and and the thing is, you got to look at the the, the power ratings. So um, that's also what's going to hurt a lot of teams because if you're not playing teams to to give you enough points, you can go undefeated and not have enough points to make it. So that's going to be tough. Yeah, it is going to be tough. And and then, gosh, when I was looking at this thing earlier, I mean, four <laughs> A is just a gigantic minefield. I mean, yeah, Brooks Catholic is actually ranked higher in the state rankings than they are in the District 3 4A <laughs> power rank. Right. Could you imagine they, they finish in the top five in the state and don't even make the playoffs? Like, that'd, that'd be insane, you know? So, um, And they've again, got a tough road to hold. Burks Catholic yeah. has a very tough schedule. Obviously, you know, we're going to talk about them picking up a game with Harrisburg this week, but they still have to play Exeter and Governor Mifflin. I mean, oh, my. Yeah. Uh, but – you know, some teams to look out there, who, teams that I think are, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, going to have good seasons. Conrad Weiser, they're doing very well. Problem is, is that their strength is scheduled down the stretch. May not benefit them in the long run. Uh, Octorera looking good. LS. Um, that is, that is, that's just crazy tough. And now in 5A, uh, probably the surprise there is Waynesboro. Um, yeah. you know, in second, um, now they play a pretty tough schedule. Um, and I'm going to like bring this up here so you can see the fact that, you know, they finished there, I think with, um, Mechanicsburg and I have to do a little adjusting here. Yeah. I think that Mechanicsburg, uh, mm -hmm. game there at the end with uh, Waynesboro could be very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Right. Um, but uh, 5A, like I said, I mean, that's just going to be really tough. You can see the one and three teams here, Governor Mifflin and Exeter, playing this week, Warwick. Um, man, yeah. that's going to be tough. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. and only four teams. That's, I mean, it's going to be a bloodbath in that 5A, boy. Woo. Yeah, and, and, you know, 6A here. Uh, some of the teams, like Carlisle, with only one game, uh, but they've got the top ranking. Boy, I tell you what, Central Central York and William Penn, I believe they play the final game of yep. the season, and mm -hmm. uh, you know every year. Wow, that could be really crazy. Right. Um, and now Harrisburg is about to sneak back in. Everybody's like, ah, <laughs> Harrisburg know, right. is about Just, to be back on the radar. Right, exactly. You know. Uh, see what happens there but you know man that's going to be hard it's you know i guess the team that probably um it, it, you know all of them have a, a tough road to hold there wilson man i'm township harrisburg i mean only four teams get in so yeah it's crazy so all right well that's that's our first look at the power rankings like on screen man how did i do yeah i love it i love it 
easy that's work. Great. That's easy there. Yeah, it is really. Don't you want to make it bigger? Because you know my vision is bad now, so I can make it bigger, so I can see it and everything. So wow, good. All right, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. That was our first go round with that, and I hope the fans like you know as at least now they can kind of see what we're talking about rather than just kind of looking sure. at a tablet and talking. At least they can see what we're doing. But um, some of the big games we're going to start to go through them this week. Um, Wow, uh, York, who quite honestly is really surprising me this year. They've got a really solid team, and uh, they're up against Red Lion this week. What do you think about that one? Yeah, after you know what happened with Red Lion last week, I think he, obviously we got to give uh, William Penn, uh, York William Penn, uh, the nod this week. I, I think they're going to continue to roll until to that monster game at the end of the season. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, and Susquehanna Township, you know, who's really down in 3A and at 0-1, right. this might yeah. be an elimination game for them already going to a 2-0 and Waynesboro team. Right. And so, again, just like last week with Redline, we're going to see if Waynesboro is, is for real. Because Susquehanna Township, they have some talent there. Uh, so we'll be able to see what, you know, Waynesboro comes out of that game and they continue to keep that number one spot. All they got to do is kind of, you know, stay clear of uh, any danger, and they might have a chance to make it. I I agree. They might just sneak in there. Um, Shippensburg, really kind of a surprising 0-2 start. Uh, they're at uh, Northern York, who's 2-0. and And in that landmine of a 4A field, Northern there. So, um, boy, what do you think about that one? Yeah, again, I am also surprised at Shippensburg. I thought they'd be a little bit better this year. Um, but it'd be a test because, you know, we, you know, we talked last year about your County, uh, football. So it'd be interesting to see, and we are rooting for them to have a team come out of there. So it'd be interesting to see what happens if your Northern York can stay on top there or if Shippensburg will get their first win of the season. Yeah. I like Northern a lot. Uh, got to know coach, uh, Bill Miller over there. I like what he's doing with that program. And, uh, I think Northern could be maybe the sleeper pick to, to, to really go a long way in 4A this year, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, LS is at Donegal. You know, I think we learned last week that you can't sleep on anybody at the uh, in the LS with Solanco beating Cocalico. What do you think? Absolutely. And I was like, I thought I was reading that wrong. I kept looking at it like, no, that's, I mean, I know. <laughs> I know that's, so like, that, that, that says a lot. So, I, I mean, I'll talk to those guys probably uh, Thursday, you know, and just, just check in as I always do, but, you know, I don't think they're going to take down a goal because like, we talked about it. One loss, they're out. They, they, they know that. So they got to, they got to go in there and play this play Donegal like it's for the, like it's a championship game. Every single like game they play game. has to be a championship game. It's a playoff game. And it actually kind of counts towards the playoff. So um, it's going to be big. They understand what they're going into. Um, that wing T is always kind of, you know, tough to, the to, to stop. But I think defensively, LS will be ready to go because, again, on defense, they're doing a great job stopping the run. And then they can play the pass, too, because they're athletic on the back end with Knapp and um, Stallfoos back there. So, uh, and um, uh, Matt Weiss over at corner also. So, like, I think they'll be good back there. And, you know, uh, obviously we had Coach Lang on from Governor Mifflin. I mean, what a slugfest here. These are not only two teams of the top ranking of District 3 and 5A, but they're both in the top 10 in the state as well. Um, it is going to be, it's going to be a knockdown drag out as they always are between Exeter right, and right. Mifflin really has turned into uh, one of the best regular season rivalries, I think in uh, district three. Uh, and I know you got guys on both sides of the ball, so I didn't really not ask any to pick, but what do you think is going to play out? Well, I think McCusker is going to have to be an X factor. He's going to have to be big in this game because it's going to be tough to run on Governor Mifflin. Um, but if they can get some holes and Strauss and Yoakum can get moving, and again, like Coach Lane talked about, their offensive line is very good. If they can get some moving and get in third and short situation, they're not getting behind the chains. And McCusker's short, sharp, again, getting the throws and making good throws. I think he will be the X factor for the game. But again, you know, Governor Mifflin has a lot of guys Aiden Martin, they got Eden Johnson, they got Nick Singleton, they got Strouser, they got Kent. So, like, they have a lot of guys that can do things, and then their quarterback also makes plays. So, um, it, it's going to be a game. 
Troy yeah. Rock is so, a guy who impressed me last yeah. week running and on defense for Governor Mifflin that nobody's talking about. Right. So, again, like it's one of those games, um, whoever can stay focused, you know, um, not get the silly penalties and doing things that they should not be doing and, and can execute, that's the team that's going to win, you know. So, again, like I said earlier, if someone gets up 14 to nothing, it's, we're going to really see how determined and, it, and how focused that, the team that is down, are they going to be able to turn it around? Are they going to just drop their heads or, you know, because again, last year, I think Governor Mitham was up, what, 20 to nothing or something like that at the half or 26 or something like that. So, yeah. or, or, um, so, or it might've been 27, six, I think, but you know, so it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I know both of those guys are going to be ready to, to, to go, but who's going to be able to keep their emotions in check. That's, that's going to be the thing because yeah. flags are going to be flying all, all over the place. Coach touched on that, uh, you know, and for, for mine, it's like, what's Mifflin going to do in the passing game, okay? Or will they even need to bring in the passing game, okay? I mean, uh, you know, they have, I think the, the starters, uh, I think uh, uh, they only threw one pass. It was a touchdown pass to Martin, you know, I mean, right, right. Uh, while the starters were in there. But I think uh, how effective Governor Mifflin may be in filtering in the passing game to at least mm -hmm. open up the running game even more you know, usually right. Governor Mifflin's M.O. is they throw five passes, but three of them are for touchdowns because nobody yeah. ever expects them to throw a touch, uh, throw a pass. So right. and I think I think that they'll they'll try and get Stewart a little bit more involved in the game. I mean, he had a, a run and, and uh, you know an end around last week. I think they'll want to get him more in on offense and defensively. Man, I tell you what. Uh, it's going to be interesting there, but gosh, Exeter is so good up front. I really like McCusker at quarterback. One of the things that uh, that I always value is experience at quarterback, and he sure does have that. And uh, so it is. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a great game. And, uh, you know, since I'm calling this game, I'm not going to pick it either. But I can tell you, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of fun sitting there in the stands and uh, mm -hmm. no, don't uh, don't jump out of your seat too much when I yell into the microphone. Okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you, you get me excited so I'm watching the game. I'm on my seats. I'm like just looking at the screen and stuff like that. So, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited. This is going to be a good game. And, yeah. It, w it will be a good game. And and the one that, that kind of, you know, popped up that uh, really is kind of uh, the, yeah. the most intriguing game this week in District 3 is Harrisburg traveling to Burke's Catholic? Wow, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that that is going to be very, very interesting. So I think we'll be able to see um, how how good Burke's Catholic is on defense, and if Harrisburg with that wing T are they going to be disciplined enough to 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 be able to you know trust their assignments and do what they're supposed to do? But I think if Burke's Catholic can get this W. On a six eighteen, those points will be huge, huge. But I mean, I think I mean I, it, again, that's another game that's going to be very exciting because Coach Cow is. I mean, they're going to be ready to go because he said we will, we will travel, we will play like whatever they got to do to play. Those boys are going to be ready to go. I think he did a great job of keeping them focused, of uh, training, thinking. Okay, well, guys, it's, it's not over yet. So those guys are going to be ready to go, man. It's going to be exciting. You know, the nice thing about it is it's a, for me anyway, it's a five o'clock kick. So I'm going to go over there. I mean, uh, Burks, I mean, Burks Catholic is only what, like two minutes from Governor Mifflin. So I'm going to get over yeah, there yeah. early, say hi to Coach Cal. I've been waiting for him to come to Burks County for I don't know how many years. So, uh, right. you know, usually I'm at Severance Field saying hello to him. It's going to be nice to see him you know, over here in Berks County. It's funny, you know, you mentioned about wing T and everything like that. When I was talking to Coach Keeley just the other day, you know, that was the question he asked me. It's like, who in the Mid-Pen Conference and who Harrisburg faces runs the wing T? Well, I sure don't know of anything. Well, Cumberland Valley used to. Yeah, yeah Cumberland right. Valley used to. Yeah. Right, correct. And that, that would be about it. And, you know, so it's going to be very interesting. Uh, really a, a clash of styles. Um, yeah, I've had Absolutely. some good conversations with the coaching staff over there this week. So 
very, very anxious to see it. I'm not – I mean, it's going to be a great game. Um, yeah, I don't want to pick that one either because it's uh, – like I said, uh, you know, you're kind of rooting for Harrisburg because, you know, coming off of, um, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, they weren't playing, now they are playing. Um, it's got to be an emotional right. lift. But, boy, Burke's Catholic playing awfully well, as you said, good momentum. Right. And, you know, a, yeah. a one-point uh, double overtime loss at Cedarcliff, the only blemish on their record. So, um, it should right, be a lot right. of fun. It is going to be a great week of football again in District Three. Um, you know what do you think, my man? Yeah, I, I'm excited, man. I, I can't wait for Friday to get here. I will be in my massage chair at zero gravity. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I will be watching the games. I have my <laughs> I have my TV up. I'll have my laptop. I have my iPad, and I have my phone in my hand, and I'll be watching four games at once. So. Uh, I'm excited. And then usually after the game, I love talking to my guys after the game, getting the text and, you know, just checking in with everybody and seeing how everybody's doing. So I'm, I'm excited. All right, my man. Well, listen, uh, this, I'll tell you what, this, each show just keeps getting better and better and better for yeah, us in this yeah. like virtual world. I don't know. Are we ever going to go back to like doing it live yeah. and in person? I don't know. These things work Whatever. out pretty good the way that they go. Right. I love it. I love it. So, All right. um, but again, that, that in person, personal touch is, is different too. So, I mean, I, I'm excited, but I, but the thing I'm looking forward to is being able to get back to the games, you know, being on the side, we're us being on the sidelines and things like that. So that's what I'm uh, looking forward to, to be able to be there for the guys and be able to talk to them during the games. All right, Daryl. Well, listen, thanks as always. And yeah, for this week, man, you just seem to be like totally pumped this week for some reason, man. You are just Mr. Yeah. Energy from the start, man. I love it. I love when you yeah. get fired up. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that That's old awesome. football That's player awesome. in you there. All right, my friend. Well, listen. Thanks for joining us here on Fresh Set of Downs. We uh, we record and upload the show either late Wednesday, early Thursday morning. We really appreciate all of your support, and we look forward to you tuning in next week. Take care now. Bye bye.